perfectionism, the fear hidden under somewhat a fancy title, fear of failure, fear of being judged by others, fear of not being good enough, resulting in anxiety, frustration, burnout and depression. From OCD to eating disorders and social anxiety, perfectionism lies at the core of many psychological issues. Another problem with pursuing perfection is that you'll never be happy with what you have achieved because you dismiss any achievements that you've worked hard for. Welcome to I'm a Perfectionist, Get Me Out of Here. I'm Eileen Webb and in the past nine years I've helped countless amount of people overcome anxiety and distress, gain confidence and feel more empowered to live happier lives. In this series, I will be interviewing the suffering as well as the recovering perfectionists to gain insight to the problems that the rigid perfectionist thinking can cause and discuss the tools and techniques that would help overcome perfectionism and take control of your life. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my podcast so we can reach more people to help. So today our guests, Connie and John, welcome. Thank you so much for coming, uh, Connie and John. Uh, so we will be talking about perfectionism today. Uh, and uh, if I may start with John uh, about what perfectionism is for you and how, how, what does it mean to you? How does it affect your life? Well, it's... Um... It's been a major theme of my life, I'll say that. Uh, what it is, it is, um, the way I view it today is it's an unreasonable and impossible standard. <laughs> it is, it is a, a false belief that, that perfection exists. And if you want to you know, take the approach that perfection only exists in imperfection, then, then great, you know, everything is as it, as it should be. But, but the idea that I can be perfect, uh, that's an impossible standard. And it, um, it leads to a, an all or nothing type of uh, approach to life, a, a, you know, a black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, I think that's an amazing way of putting it uh, together, really. Um, so how... What did it mean to you? Um, what you know? What kind of um, parts of your life have you <laughs> all <And> parts? <laughs> yes, yeah. So Connie and I, Connie and I balance each other um, well because we are, you know, mostly because our differences. We're and so where I'm, I came from a background of perfectionism. She came from a background of just get it done. Survival. If it's, yeah, survival. If it's close, it's, it's fine. And, uh, and so she's, she's been a very grounding influence for me for over 40 years. Um, where, so I, you had suggested a couple of questions and uh, where did it come from? Well, um, it came from my early life. I feel like both of my parents were, were perfectionists. So you know, when I did something as a as a child, uh, the praise was that's great, but and there was always a but and a suggestion of how I could improve, and unfortunately I heard that as not good enough, you know, Im imperfect. And uh, we we joke. My my mother had a, a a way of looking at things that there was only one right way of doing everything. It was usually her way, <laughs> but there was only one right way. And your dad was the same. <laughs> and and the other the other concept and and identified these much you know later in life and and it it was helpful actually to have her as a mirror, you know to to then helpfully help me see those things in myself, see those things that I had copied. And so because um, it's a habit, right? It's a behavioral habit, but. Um, the uh, the other funny thing w was the um, you know it's ruined forever. If something got a little scratch on it, or um, or a big scratch, or got broken, or, or you know it it was ruined forever. Even if you could mend it, even if you never you know you didn't see it, even if it just got moved, 
it was ruined. Sometimes. <laughs> so everything had to be in its place. And if you move it just a different mm. direction. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. She put furniture in a, in a room, room and it'd stay there for 20 years and never move. At least 20 years. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we moved before it did. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, what, what it, it seems like you have been a different pair of eyes looking from a different perspective. And, you know, they say um, they say that you cannot see the picture if you're inside the frame. Uh, so uh, it's it, it sounds to me that you were outside and, and just uh, showing John what's happening as a, as a different pair of eyes from a different perspective. How did yeah. you experience uh, John's perfectionism? How was that for you? Frustrating, uh, funny. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh, quite hilarious at many points. Many points. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you know a, a source of you know eye rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and tell the story. Which story? The bagel. <laughs> That's your story. <laughs> Okay. okay, so we were we were at um, out to breakfast with some friends, and and I had ordered a bagel and cream cheese, and I was applying the cream cheese to my bagel as I was like to do, and I looked up, and my friend was looking across the table at me, and and he had his head cocked, and he was grinning, and and I said what, and he said, I don't believe I've ever seen anybody do that with the the level of attention and, <laughs> and, and take as much time as you have done I was trying to get it you know exactly whatever an eighth of an inch thick you know on every little piece of the bagel I was trying to be perfect <laughs> and, and so when these things were happening in your daily lives how did you take that Connie how you know oh I snicker <laughs> Roll my eyes, you know, did the whole, did the whole, you know, I can't believe you're really doing that crap. <laughs> yeah. And and did you then, did you start uh, looking at it from a different perspective, uh, John? Did it help you see, actually, I don't want to spend this much time, or was it difficult to, to let go of that? It, it was that it, both it did help me and it was uh you know it was a slow a slow transition it, i learned to see the humor in it and connie didn't do it from a, a judgmental st standpoint you know she was doing it uh, she was making light of it and and i could see the humor uh, most of the time most of that yeah. there was um you know early on and i think one of the things about perfectionism that's that that's tough is that the perfectionist doesn't always recognize they're a perfectionist they they look at them i looked at myself as having just high standards yeah and you know really high standards but i looked at that as a as a, a point of pride as a strong character <laughs> and that that really actually is a bit problematic because um, sometimes when i talk about perfectionism many people they don't think they're perfectionists because they think perfect people are perfectionists um, and I'm keeping high standards and to keep those high standards, I really have to work hard, but that's something I'm proud of. And, and, and perfectionism is not something that is me, just uh, I just have those high standards um, that sometimes is quite hard to, to, to get to, but that I am proud of. However, they actually don't identify themselves as perfectionists because it's other people you know, <laughs> perfectionists are those who drive the perfect cars who has the perfect wives and children and husbands and perfect houses and perfect friends and going to perfect places which i think is interesting right that perfectionists don't identify with the perfect perfection as such because they never think they reach that ever. It's, it's as if they see other other perfectionists as imperfect <laughs> in, in their attempt to be perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Connie, so uh, do you, uh, so during your many, many years together. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking 40, almost 47. My, oh my goodness. Yeah. You don't look 
old enough. Well, he was ready. a baby when I got him, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look baby yourself. Well, I do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So 47 years together. Oh, my goodness. So uh, was perfectionism affecting your relationship in the beginning a lot more than um, it did later on? And now, perhaps, is it still, you called yourself recovering perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. I did. I think it's, well, I think it's lessened, you know, in our early yeah. years, you know, you know how the whole trying to impress each other and, you know, doing the, the whole uh, bendy thing. Uh, but then after a while, yeah, you get to the point of going, whoa, time out on this. You know, we're not going to do that anymore. And I think that started happening when we had kids because somebody wanted a perfect, perfect kid and I've never seen a perfect kid have you <laughs> you know as they're throwing up all over you or you know they're dragging their dirty diaper around the room you know things like that <laughs> those things happen and um yeah that's that was probably the, the, big trigger the, yeah big trigger big trigger yeah. to to come yeah because I, I got yeah. I got fairly free uh and thinking and independent uh and then we moved we moved from we we were we met in Atlanta. We moved back to Florida to, and I joined the family business, and we moved onto the property next door to my parents. Mm -hmm. So now we're oh. yeah, not, not the wisest choice uh, for for <laughs> for us. So um, yeah, when we became parents, it was like we you know we had them watching us, and and I felt like I had to be the perfect parent. Wanted to be the perfect parent. Didn't want to mess up my kids, yeah. and didn't know how to be didn't didn't have a role model for that so yeah it was and and that's that's one of the prices of perfectionism is you you feel like you you never quite measure up and so there's this sense of dissatisfaction of, of falling short mm. all the time uh, i expect that that's one of the the things that i, I still see recurring is that i expect to disappoint people it's, it's like i have this I know sooner or later I'm going to disappoint because I'm not perfect. And, and that's a, when I feel threatened uh, or unsafe, that's when the perfectionism gets triggered. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing that. That's really amazing. And how are you, how, how are you managing that now? Um, because you mentioned to be, a recovering perfectionist and how um when when you notice the trigger how are you managing now and how is how is uh being with connie for so many years how, how is it, how is that helping or not helping <laughs> we, we we still um you know we're still different people we still have our different levels um I, I i think uh you know we we it's a again it's a habit i think i've lessened it a lot but i don't i don't i think it's a part of me that'll never completely go away it's just like you said managing um and recognizing recognizing it not letting it get um get out of hand you know that that all or nothing that that extreme the, not going to the extremes i think um because that um that that thing I've mentioned, my mother, you know, something's completely, you know, it's either perfect or it's completely ruined. That that there's no in between. So not, you know, recognizing that and not going there and saying, you know, it's okay, it's it's okay. There's a there's a principle. There's something that came through one of the things we've done. We've been doing personal development of some sort. We we met in a personal development program, mm -hmm. and we've been doing it ever since, oh, okay. in some way or or shape. And uh, the the principle of kensugi. Are you familiar with that in Japanese? No, well, it's I'll, a. I'll make a note of that. I, I'm not sure I can spell it properly for you. K i n s u g i maybe. Okay. Um, but it's it's a when they break a piece of pottery, uh, they oh. will mend it with a lacquer that has gold dust in the lacquer so that where the all the little cracks and lines of where it's been mended together instead of just being a, a crack it's now a gold decoration and so it's this idea of valuing our scars valuing our you know the the little imperfections, imperfections and 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 the, the repair and the growth yeah and that, that's a I got triggered on something 
today, I'll confess. And, uh, you know, it's probably a setup for this, this call. But, you know, re reminding myself of that Kintsugi principle was, was really huge. Um, so uh, other things that have helped me in general have been the idea of um, the, the different, some distinctions. Uh, the distinction of, of uncomfortable versus unsafe is a big one. Uh, I, I think a lot of people probably share, I had that confused. And so like difficult conversations or, um, you know, um, yeah, just uncomfortable situations socially would feel unsafe. So early in our marriage, if, if we were having an argument, I was afraid it was over. You know, if we were gonna have a big conflict, it was because it was all or nothing. <laughs> you remember that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rather not, but thanks. <laughs> what did you think about that, Cody? When you know, uh, with with all or nothing thinking, black and white. Um... Oh, it was frustrating beyond words because it's kind of like, and, and there again, this is an only child, so he never had the joy of going up and smacking your brother just to hear him cry. Okay, mm -hmm. and 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 not ever being able to lose. So in his world, he had to not necessarily always win, but he always had to have that perfectionism and he couldn't relax into anything. And that was, that was difficult to, to try to work around. Yeah, and it sounds to me, John, that you, there was always like, I'll do my best, but there will always be a box. So mm -hmm. it does do that. He was always waiting for the box. Yes, um, right. always. Right, so um, that, that sense of, of impending or constant uh, disappointment is not only within the, the person, I, I think, of, that has the perfectionist habit, but also the, um, you know, the expectation mm -hmm. of, of disappointing others, like I was saying. Well, and there's an expectation, too, that other people are going to come up to your level and, 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 um, that, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And see, we had that with his parents, because we cared to take for his parents for the last, for their last years. Mm -hmm. So we had them, I, we had his mom for 10 years. And so that was, that was learning how to balance her need of controlling everything and my need of going, uh, no. <laughs> okay. And how did, that, how did it work? How did it go? Um, we had our moments. Yeah, we, we did. And, uh, but you know, she, she eventually capitulated. <laughs> She, she took she took actually pretty um graciously gracefully to to yeah. the changing changing mm -hmm. roles and and yeah. being kind of becoming the child in the relationship instead of the mm -hmm. adult yeah yeah and you mentioned um uh, connie that uh, as john being the only child and you know uh, the the parents who were just um going for him to be perfect so there was always a but you know you can mm -hmm. do better than that and you can do better and you said you were from a completely different environment would that be okay to ask you if you had you know, many siblings and was sure that, how, was, how have, was that different well i have a younger brother who is deaf and aphasic so the the multitude of problems that he brought into a, a situation and we were at poverty level mm -hmm. um was um you know, almost overwhelming. So there, there was all survival mode. There was never any, uh, you couldn't be perfect mm -hmm. because there wasn't time for that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. there wasn't the time or the resources for that. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was always just, you know, struggle to make it through the day and, and hope that you got everything done. Yeah, yeah, so, so very different upbringing totally different upbringing. And really balancing each other out mm -hmm. fantastic you have told me a couple of funny stories as well so thank you for that because there's always that um interesting side to it that make people laugh or um you know one of one of my friends family she uh if she was a bit grumpy the family just turned away the cups to a different um you know to a different direction and then uh, she would be like yeah they're supposed to be like this. <laughs> and, 
and, and you know, same same as my mom. If uh, if we move anything in the house, she will know, and they'll be moved back. And I'm talking about small ornaments, uh, not oh, our furniture. Yeah. I mean, ornaments, even if the uh, cushions are not put the right way, oh, she'll know. Oh, our <laughs> son put a a a, um, a business card on the refrigerator. Uh, which was full of magnets and all sorts of stuff. My mother-in-law went absolutely crazy coming in and accusing me of doing all sorts of stuff and what was wrong and what did I do to her kitchen and oh she lost it and it took me about a day to figure out and I probably went to the boys going who did what to where you know what did you do and Josh went oh I put a you know a business card I picked up at the restaurant where we had breakfast yesterday and put it up there because it was you know a a guide fishing guide so I thought maybe that somebody would like to have that something was different so, something was and different. she couldn't identify what was different she just she could tell that something was different Ooh. and it bugged her yeah. oh it bugged her bad <laughs> yeah and and see so also John I guess you were um as you were growing up, you might have learned to be alert all the time. You know, there's, oh, there's, as you mentioned, unsafety. I'm not safe here. Mm -hmm. Always on edge. Yeah. 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 Always on edge. Yeah. So, so, um, if you could, you know, if, if, if you could, change anything about the perfectionism what would your what would the most important one be for you because we you know we talked about expectations from yourself and then expectations from others and then it and then the perception of others expectations from you uh in terms of for example with your parents so just perceiving a standard that might be that you think others are expecting of you. Uh, so oh, oh, if we think about those three domains, um, do you think all three have affected you as we were talking, they were kind of coming up, um, it sounded, and which one, which one has been the worst for you? And if you were to change, what would you change? Hmm. That's a lot there. That is a tough Sorry, one. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think because because I live in my own skin 24-7, I think the the you know apply expecting what I expected of myself mm -hmm. and and the inner critic self self-judgment or self-criticism when I didn't meet that. Um, you know, if I could change any part of it, it would be that part. And and I, I wish, you know, I'd I'd learned a long a lot sooner in life that that um, you know that behave that's still just a behavior. It's a it's a belief and a behavior, but it's not it's not a character flaw. It's not who I am. It's what it's it's just what I do. And and that distinction between the person and the behavior is you know so huge. We can we can change a behavior like we can change a, an article of clothing, but who we are is who we are. And, and it, there's so much more power in seeing it for what it is. Yeah, and it's, it's really amazing, isn't it? Because up till the generation before us, um, no one believed that you could change. I mean, people thought that they were born and then set in their ways and nothing could change um, until everyone kind of looked at it. Hang on a moment, actually, no, it is possible because what we are is all... Uh, well, besides the genetics, of course, um, there are a lot of things that we are capable of changing, whatever the age. Uh, yeah. Of. So, um, so that's quite amazing, isn't it? Co coming with all the awareness. So, um, what would you what would you say? You know, is there anything, firstly, that I didn't cover, and I would also really like to before. Um, we, you go I'd like to just hear from both of you what you would um, recommend to to our audience you know uh, who might be dealing with the negative effects of perfectionism or living with a perfectionist 
<laughs> Jump in. Come on. Yeah, living with a perfectionist is is probably the most difficult because you see them suffer so much. The 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 pain and the agony that I see him go through on on trying so hard and and becoming stuck in that loop is the actually the hardest thing for me. Is and and to get him out of that sometimes requires major um, expenditure on my account, you know, of getting him to move, whether it's go out for a walk or, or just, you know, getting in his face, <laughs> almost yelling, <laughs> just to say, just to change up the energy and, and to, get, to get it moving in a different direction. Yeah. And, and he's, he's, he's better at it now as he's gotten older um, of, of changing quicker. And, and allowing me to do that. Whereas, you know, in our early years, he wouldn't allow me to do it as, as um, easily. And it's not manipulative. It's, no. uh, so I'm not quite sure how to label it, but it's, it's. Well, she's got a master's in psychology. He's probably got a pretty good label for it. <laughs> State change is what I call it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's get up, you know, change. just get up and move. Do and something and sometimes it's, it's just going over there and grabbing him by the hand and go, oh, we're going to go do this. And I have no idea what this is, but it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just changing the perspective and looking exactly, at, okay, exactly moving on, right? Procrastinating, right? Yeah, moving the energy. That's that's really good. Has there been, Connie, has there been any times for you where you? Um, we, we, you felt that that perfectionism um, was a um, pressure on you. Oh, no, absolutely. In terms of you changing your ways, so that absolutely, you, uh, and especially more with his parents than it was with with me. I mean, with him, um, we also worked with his parents or his his dad, and I was also in the office and worked full time too. <laughs> for about 10 years. And uh, so then we caretaked for all them in their, in their later years. So yeah, more with them because it, they were harder for me to change in that, you know, getting them off of whatever loop they were in, uh, especially his dad, his mom, I could do, but, and, and, you know, he, he's gotten better with age, John has, but uh yeah, his, his dad was a toughie. Well, okay, and this is one of those, another one of those little funny things. Um, uh, me correcting Connie is, is an example. Um, <laughs> Connie has uh, one of the- holding at the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the phrases that she says um, it, it is uh, that instead of six to one, a half a dozen to the other, Connie says it- Six to one. Ha half to one and six, six dozen to the other. <laughs> Okay, and I do it just to tick him off as much as anything and, else. Okay. And I corrected that. I used to correct that all the time. And, you know, I finally, um, I'm trying to remember, it might even have been that Mars and Venus book that came out many years ago, but it was like, you know, appreciate the differences. And, and instead of correcting that and trying to make it perfect, is, is appreciate that as a, as a, you know, it's truly character. It is, you know, that's what part of what makes Connie the character she is. And that's right. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's one thing. I, I, and, and finding humor. I think, you know, if there's anything it, it, while you're recovering, while you're trying, a person is, is, is changing to be patient with it, it's a process. You know, if, if you, it takes a while to learn a habit and, and you have to replace a habit with something different. And uh, there, there was another, uh, when my, Young, our youngest son, who just turned 41, uh, was about 10. Uh, I was uh, sitting at our, we had a computer desk and I was sitting at the computer and, and he went, he went past me with a, he had a little desk chair that we bought him, bought for his, for him to do his homework at in his room. And he was wheeling this little desk chair out into our garage where we, that we turned into a little playroom for the kids to play a video game. And I said, no, that, that chair's for doing homework perfectionism right <laughs> can't be used anywhere else <laughs> and and he looked at me and he said i don't think the chair's gonna mind and then he <laughs> kept right on going 
<laughs> Could have been any more perfect. Could have been any more perfect. Ten years old. I mean, I fell out of the chair laughing. First of all, second of all, I knew he was going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah. But I hadn't screwed up too bad. <laughs> She'd had more effect on him than I had. And I think Connie was like, yes, yes. Oh, I was. I was back there doing the happy dance. <laughs> yeah. That was a moral victory. Oh, it was. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. How is and that kid still he? remembers it? He still remembers that that we we still joke with him about the chair. <laughs> well, it sounds to me um that as a 10-year-old. Being able to think that and answer that, wow, that's pretty sharp, isn't it? That's right. And that quickly. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty sharp. Exactly. I don't think the yeah. Oh, mind. yeah. I shall remember that forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's still oh. like that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he still is very much like that. <laughs> well, um, you two have been absolutely amazing and thank you thank you it's up. been fun I'm, I'm so humbled thank you so much for sharing your story oh it's absolutely <laughs> and uh, if it helps one person that's right have less pain while they recover get over <laughs> their <laughs> lessen their perfectionism it'll be absolutely exactly it. exactly each and every person that we can um we can free from perfectionism exactly free right. that's a great term that is because that's why it, it is here. a bit of a prison <laughs> it is a, a whole big one yeah i i agree thank you so much well, thank, thank you. you very much mm -hmm.